Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, authorities in two area counties make a money laundering arrest the full amount this afternoon. More hostages and prisoners were freed between Israel and Hamas. Meanwhile, the country is investigating claims about the death of a hostage and their family. And a settlement was approved by the Fort Worth City Council Tuesday for a child who witnessed the death of his aunt. Good afternoon, everyone. The clouds are here and we're getting ready for that rain event. Where is it? Well, it's not formed yet, uh, but it should be here overnight. And by tomorrow, we have a good possibility of seeing some significant rainfall. We'll be talking about that and talking about all the way to the weekend in just a moment. So stay tuned. Plus, a valet driver is speaking out about his near-death experience at a hit and run in Houston. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia has the day off. An autopsy report is pending in the case of Amanda Stevenson. 25 News Now has learned the man who took his own life during a traffic stop last Wednesday, 45-year-old Kevin Bennetson, was an accredited elementary school teacher. His LinkedIn profile shows he once worked as a parole officer. Amanda Stevenson was reported missing last Tuesday. Police found a body yesterday and believe it to be that of Amanda Stevenson. Sheriff's deputies from Goliad and Refugio counties teamed up on a traffic stop in Refugio. The deputies, part of the Operation Lone Star Task Force, found $86,000 in U.S. currency in the vehicle. 49-year-old Nancy Ramirez was arrested and charged with money laundering. A Victoria County man was arrested in DeWitt County. 39-year-old Byron Holland was taken into custody for a violation of his probation in Victoria County. Holland faces an assault with a deadly weapon charge. He is in the DeWitt County Jail in lieu of $50,000 bond. For today's viewer poll, we want to know what do you think contributes most to the crashes, vehicle crashes in the area? Is it DWI, speeding, road rage? ignoring traffic signals or distracted driving. We want to hear your opinion. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and I'll have an update on 25 News Now at 6. And now let's take a first look at your first Warren Storm Team forecast. Chief Meteorologist Mac Petta has joined us now with a look what's going on outside, and Mac is going to give us a peek also at something coming up outside in how many hours, Mac? Well, we're talking uh, of sunrise. Uh, that's when the whole system sort of comes together. Uh, this is Future Tracker, as you can see right here, and it's Thursday, 7 a.m., and that's when the rain will begin. The question is that we are likely to get some severe thunderstorms just to the north of our area, so they'll be included in the crossroads, but mostly it goes up to Houston, and we'll be talking about because we could see um, maybe up to an inch of rain uh, all in one day. We'll have all that coming up in just a moment. Don, back to you. Mike, thank you. The Israeli military says Hamas has released 12 more hostages from captivity in the Gaza Strip. The first two hostages were transferred to Egypt late Wednesday with 10 more expected for release. 30 Palestinians were also freed. It was the sixth release of Israeli hostages under a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The ceasefire is expected to end early Thursday, but international mediators are working to extend the truce by several days to allow further releases of hostages. Meanwhile, Israel's defense forces are assessing a Hamas claim that the youngest Israeli hostage is no longer alive. Without providing evidence, Hamas says a 10-month-old, a 4-year-old, and their mother were killed in an Israeli airstrike. A member of the family confirmed that Israeli military approached them regarding the report. The family released a statement saying they are waiting for confirmation and requesting, quote, privacy during this difficult time, unquote. In Fort Worth, a $3.5 million settlement was approved for a child who witnessed the fatal shooting of his aunt through her home's window by a police officer four years ago. On Tuesday, the city council approved settlement for eight-year-old Zion Carr when Atatiana Jefferson was killed. Former police officer Aaron Dean was convicted of manslaughter in her death and was sentenced to nearly 12 years. He shot her on October 12, 2019, after a neighbor called a non-emergency police line to report that her home's front door was open. A judge is still needed to approve the settlement. A hit and run in Houston that sent a valet driver 90 feet in the air was caught on camera, and the truck involved 
just kept on going. Now, the man who was hit is speaking out about the violent incident. I could have died, like, I could, I, I could have been dead right now. Novik Ando Nombi was just as stunned by the severity of the impact <laughs> as a stranger might be, even though it happened to him. I didn't realize until I saw the video. The 23-year-old sitting on his couch in southwest Houston this evening after spending five days in the hospital. It's lacking many pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so they are to put, like, Metas and screws. His injuries, many. My right arm completely broken. Uh, I have like my left eye that got hit. So I, think, I don't know if it's to see, but it's kind of red. It's red. I have some uh, fractures on my face. The alternative, unthinkable. It really like uh, the grace of God. So yeah. I'm really glad I'm still here. Novik was working as a valet for a club near Old Spanish Trail early Thanksgiving morning when an angry driver plowed into him, <coughs> launching him 90 feet. That's kind of pure evilness, you know. Witnesses told Houston police a man was upset that his truck had been broken into earlier and was accusing the valets. Novik and a co-worker were walking to get a car when he was hit. And then, boom. <coughs> Nothing. That's my last memory. He woke up hours later in the hospital and wasn't released until Monday. The TSU student from Gabon on the west coast of Central Africa sadly wasn't surprised. He had become a victim. Because I know that it's America, so stuff like this happened. Video shared with ABC 13 captured the large pickup truck with a light bar on top. The driver yet to be identified, but Novik wants justice. What he did was definitely intentional and he just fled after that so I'm really hoping that he is that the police can catch him and he can take responsibility of what he did because on the video it's not only me but it could have been also my friend. Jessica Willie, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. At least one person was killed after a U.S. military Osprey aircraft crashed off the coast of a Japanese island. A total of six people were believed to be on board. The U.S. Air Force has confirmed a B-22 Osprey went down off the coast of the island. Japan's Coast Guard said the accident happened Wednesday afternoon. One person was recovered and taken to a hospital with no vital signs, but has yet to be confirmed dead by a doctor. Numerous Osprey crashes were reported over the years, including one in August when three U.S. Marines were killed in Australia. The city of Juarez, Mexico, will soon open a warming center. Once temperatures drop drastically, it will ho uh, give shelter to the homeless and others during the winter season. The shelter can house up to 120 people. The Juarez Civil Protections Rescue Department will run the shelter. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave. Calhoun County's community got to voice their opinions on the construction of a pier during a special workshop. And Calhoun High School scene stealers performed the Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon on November 17th that left the audience wanting more. Plus, Magnolia Beach Volunteer Fire Department is expected to receive a new station. You can read these stories and more at the PortLavacaWave.com. Goliad County's Cristo Rey Cemetery was approved as a distinguished historical cemetery. The Goliad Advance Guard reports the cemetery has 28 unmarked graves. Before more burials can be performed, Goliad County had to locate buried bodies in the cemetery that are in unmarked grave sites. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. A private service for former First Lady Rosalind Carter was held today. Straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5, we go over ways on how to support someone through spousal loss. Also ahead, a stray dog in East Texas gets a fitting name after spending a month with a jug on his head.
Jimmy Carter attended the private funeral services for his wife today. The service for former First Lady Rosalind Carter was held in Plains, Georgia. It included tributes from Mrs. Carter's sons, along with scripture readings by three of her great-grandchildren. Jimmy Carter, who is 99 and receiving hospice care at home, was also able to attend Tuesday's service in Atlanta. Rosalind Carter died on November 19th at the age of 96. The loss of a spouse can have a profound impact impact on health, both emotionally and physically, and it's something millions of older adults experience. Losing a loved one is never easy, but the loss of a longtime spouse can be especially hard. Couples have oftentimes compensated for one another's deficits. Geriatrician Amit Shaw with Mayo Clinic says surviving spouses may have to take on new roles and responsibilities because of their loss. It can be especially overwhelming as they deal with grief, which can affect them not only emotionally, but physically as well. There's a syndrome called broken heart syndrome where you can actually see a person's heart function decline on an ultrasound or echocardiogram of their heart. Shaw says asking how you can help fill in the gaps for things a partner used to do can help. Since there's no timeline for grief and everyone feels it differently, Shaw says to check in on a surviving spouse often and over time. Don't give up on them. Remember them beyond that acute period um, and, uh, and really <clears throat> reach out. Shaw says to help them grow around their grief by acknowledging things will never be the same and engage with them. Try to get them doing things they once enjoyed, like a hobby. He says never assume you know how they're feeling. Because what if they are feeling relieved that death has finally come and suffering is over and you're expecting them to be sad and now you've made them feel badly about not being sad. So I think just open-ended, genuine care can never go wrong. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. A Phoenix police officer is paying it forward just months after she was shot in the line of duty. Morgan Bullis was shot in the hip in March of this year. As part of her recovery, she received blood transfusions. And on Tuesday, she, along with several first responders, donated blood for a holiday blood drive. At the time of the shooting, the 26-year-old officer was with the Phoenix Police Department for less than a year. She returned to her job in July. A dog north of Houston has a new name after the stray got a jug stuck on his head. A woman spent a month trying to help him, and now it's finally paid off. This was the moment Jughead and his friend Red were finally caught. Both appear to be scared. Lucky for them, they were safe. Jughead's life about to change. We took wire cutters and cut all the way around it and pulled it off of his head. So this was the only way that he was able to eat and drink. Or see. Terry Goodnight has been trapping dogs in Montgomery County for about three years. She was first alerted to Jughead's situation on October 26. We didn't know it, that, he, you know, we thought he couldn't breathe. We didn't know there was an opening at the other end. So it became, you know, like, you know, high priority to get him caught. But then we realized, you know, he could breathe, he could eat, he could drink. But I still wasn't going to give up on him. Jughead was in the Porter area, roaming neighborhoods near FM 1314 and Lazy Lane. The jug on his head actually a cat feeder. He was an opportunistic eater. <laughs> so the food was on the porch and, and he helped himself to it and got his head stuck in the container on October 21st. And it's been an everyday effort trying to get him since then. I literally cried for 10 minutes after I caught him. I just broke down and just started crying. Just, I was relieved it was over. Good night says saving Jughead is rewarding too and hopes to continue helping others in similar situations. Jughead and Red now in the care of the East Texas Hoof and Paw Animal Rescue. These two had a foster. They're now with a, a rescue, so they will be vetted and, and adopted out and go to loving homes and not have to be street dogs anymore. Here's a look at some of the top headlines you'll find in the Quero Record. The DeWitt County Commissioner's Court met Monday. DeWitt County has a new AgriLife Extension 4-H agent. And Quero football season ends in the third round of the playoffs. Read these stories and more at QueroRecord.com. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are looking at all the cloud cover, and we're wondering, okay, when, where's the rain? Well, this is not one of those things that it develops over there and then rolls toward us. This is going to just evolve on top of us, so it's going to be an interesting uh, situation. But it looks like that by tomorrow morning, 
shower activity will begin around here and tomorrow afternoon and evening is when it should get fairly heavy. Uh, we may even have some thunder and lightning to deal with and we'll talk about it coming up in uh, just a moment. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Lots of cloud cover around the area. No pre precipitation out there right now, but tomorrow should be very different from today. Not particularly cold uh, in the mid 60s uh, uh, currently, and our high temperature, well, actually it did get up to 70, but it hasn't come in on the machine just yet. And uh, now the big deal is tomorrow, uh, is, has not formed yet. Here's the uh, Victoria area, crossroads all the way up to Houston. This is where it's gonna get rather interesting as this whole thing sort of de develops over us. What we have is a jet streak. In other words, imagine if you will, there's a fast moving pocket of air up high and then it's gonna be rolling toward us. Well, if it's going that way fast, it's lifting the moisture and that creates the vertical velocities that we need to create the showers and then the thunder showers. And that's what we're concerned with uh, as of tomorrow. Now, after that, it's going to be settling down as we get to the weekend. Here's a view of Future Tracker. You see uh, five o'clock right about now. You see how the storm drops down tonight over the southwest and tomorrow morning we'll start rolling uh, through our area. This is why we expect the stuff to develop very quickly on top of us and then it moves out fairly quickly as well. The weekend uh, does not look very cold. It may be a little on the cloudy and damp side, but there you see that uh, high level winds. These uh, yellow lines, these are the upper level winds and the way they go is where the storms go. They basically drive uh, the weather as to where it's gonna go. So you can see how that storm is gonna book it on out of here all the way up to the northeast. Uh, we've got another view of a future tracker to show you what we expect. We start off on Wednesday uh, and then uh, Wednesday evening there at 11 o'clock. There you have it at uh, nine, eight in the morning, right? Thursday, eight in the morning, shower activity just blooms on top of us. 
and then we go through Thursday afternoon. We still have shower activity sort of on top of us, but then as we get to Friday, you can see how a lot of that just begins to pull away. And certainly by Friday night and Saturday, it's pretty much out of the picture. Uh, the how much rain we're going to get is the big question mark because these are going to be slow moving downpours, not slow moving downpours, fast moving downpours. So here's Victoria and you can see half an inch in the green up to an inch in the blue and the heaviest stuff will be up in the Houston area where they do actually have a chance at some uh, more severe weather. Now we are here in the green, which puts us at a marginal chance, slight chance up toward the Wharton area. And then right downtown Houston has an enhanced opportunity of getting some severe weather. Uh, and that is uh, heavy thunder, lightning, possible, very slim chance for tornadoes, but maybe some hail as well as, like I said, it's a fast moving thing, only gonna be around for maybe 10 or 12 hours and then it's pretty much gone. So let's take a look at your uh, planner for tomorrow. 70 in the morning, not particularly cold, up to 75, but then the shower activity and the rain will should be with us for most of Thursday. In Quero, we're looking for 66 in the morning, 75 in the afternoon, showers and rain, mostly cloudy all day long. And then we look at the extended outlook. So 70% for Thursday, we got an alert day for everybody. Friday, the rain tapers off, little breezy, and cloudy and damp with only a 20% chance of any kind of rain activity over the weekend. So it's all going to happen tomorrow afternoon uh, right here in the crossroads. Well, that is your seven day forecast. Just reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that crossroads today on your phone. Here's Don. Mike, thank you. And coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, in real estate news, home prices continued to climb in September. Taking a look at your stocks, the Dow up 13 points, the S&P 500 down 4 points, and the Nasdaq down 23 points. Oil up $1.45, closing at $77.86 a barrel. 
Data released on Tuesday showed that home prices in the U.S. continued to rise in September, marking the eighth consecutive month of rises. Mortgage rates remained above 7 percent in September, but historically low inventory continued to raise home prices. In fact, they remained at an all-time high in several major cities. Home prices grew nearly 7 percent in September alone in Detroit, San Diego and New York. The Texas Tribune reports that major cities in the state are facing a decline in office tenants as remote and hybrid working becomes the new normal. Stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast. Plus, a woman in Iowa is showcasing her holiday spirit with more than 40 trees inside her home. And now here's a look what's coming up on World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. Coming up tonight, breaking news. The images of the hostages coming in now. An American woman, a mother of three among those released. Also authorities on the Christmas tree lighting here in New York, why they're concerned. And remembering an actress tonight, she was on Cheers in ER. We're next. Finally tonight, instead of a holiday tree, an Iowa woman is enjoying a Christmas forest. <laughs> Susan Dunn has 47 Christmas trees set up in her home. Christmas is without a doubt her favorite holiday. She spent decades collecting Christmas trees and ornaments, and this month she gets to show them off. Just love Christmas mm -hmm. and ornaments. I'm kind of addicted to buying ornaments, and then if they have a theme, that makes a tree. Some of the themes include a show tree, a Disney tree, and even an upside down tree hanging in the front window. I don't know if I'd want to be near the upside down tree yeah, because the ornaments, you, the ornaments <laughs> and the lights. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's great to. Oh, there it is, there right it there. Is, yeah, yeah, upside down. It's like okay, yeah. that's kind of interesting. Yeah, hey, Christmas tree. I, I wonder if all the Christmas trees in there were real or they were artificial. It's a good question. My 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 sister-in-law, uh, God bless her. I mean. 
she probably had 10 or 12 trees and uh, really? she was serious about it man <laughs> and my, my poor brother-in-law had to put them all in the garage oh. and then they take them all out every oh, year but yeah. uh they, there's some people that really like the holidays and they you know it's awesome oh absolutely good stuff, good stuff. now before we get to the holidays though mm -hmm. we've got something coming in yeah well tomorrow we are expecting that outbreak of uh, heavy thunderstorms and uh, it's not developed yet but tomorrow being Thursday morning is when the shower activity should begin. I think that by afternoon Thursday, you're going to be looking for your rain gear because we're going to get uh, some pretty heavy thunder showers. Just from uh, Victoria up to possibly Wharton, there's a possibility of some severe weather. Uh, going up to Houston, it gets more serious, and they may have some tornadoes up in that area. But uh, certainly thunder and lightning coming through, and it's only going to last 12 hours, and then it's, it's gone. So that's the good news. It'll be clearing out by Friday. All right. Thank you, Mac, and thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.